Working on a large Stuart model steam plant. Part 1. Making the south of the engine's large duplex pump work again. I assembled this steam plant for a customer a few years ago and this beautiful Southworth duplex pump was one that I'd sold him previously. This was built by a friend of mine, the late Bernard Walker, and it's a really good pump. When I had it, it worked perfectly, and I sold it to a customer, and then he said it didn't work. So I talked him through on the phone and said it's probably the valves that are stuck. Just dribble some boiling water from a kettle on the water chest and that should free them off as it heats it up. Don't forget at this stage, the duplex pump wasn't in a steam plant, it was freestanding. He removed the steam chest cover and the steam chest to have a look inside, I do believe. And then when he put it back together, he put it back together with an abnormally large amount of silicone rubber. I assumed that everything was okay because I hadn't heard from him for a while. And then he brought the pump along with some other items for me to build into a steam plant. The beautiful HB6 boiler from Stuart Models arrived directly from Stuart Models to me. And the pump didn't work at all. So, dutifully, I built it into the plant as I was asked to do. And then I thought, well, it's not working, I'm going to have a look at this. So I took the water chest cover off. And I really wish that I hadn't done because there was silicone rubber everywhere over the top of the valves around the inside. I think what he'd done is just smeared silicone rubber all around the edge of the steam chest and then fitted it back in place. And as he tightened it up, it wiped off all the silicone rubber that came out from the outside. But he couldn't wipe off the silicone rubber that went into the inside and did the damage. While I'm telling you all about the history of the pump, what's showing on the screen bears no relation to what I'm speaking about but I thought I'd like to fill you in on some of the history of the pump. There's a full video series describing how I assembled this steam plant pump as well. And if you want to watch this video, it's called Assembling a High Quality Model Steam Plant. The title is on screen at the moment. If you want to go and have a look on my mainsteam.co.uk website and navigate to the section marked Video Playlists, you'll be able to see everything that I've ever done on YouTube. Well, at least the public videos anyway. And here we go, it's disassembly time. First thing to do, remove the water chest cover. Just in case you're wondering, the thing that screws into the large threaded hole in the middle of the cover is the expansion vessel. And you find versions of these in central heating systems, and all they are is an air reservoir to cushion the shock of the water being turned on and off. Like sometimes in old houses, the plumbing's really bad. As you turn the tap off, things go clunk, and that's because water isn't compressible, but if you put an air reservoir in the circuit, air is compressible and it acts as a damper. As usual, I'm using a Stanley knife blade to remove the cap to break the seal. And on the video, I've just shown the way not to do it. Do not use it with the Stanley knife blade fitted into an actual Stanley knife. It doesn't really work very well that way. And because of the weight of the Stanley knife handle, there's too much inertia and you're likely to damage the part or yourself if the knife should slip. A gentle tap with a hammer on a standard Stanley knife blade is all you need. Just be careful of your fingers because it's no good bleeding all over the pump. And this is what's inside the top chamber of the water chest. Four valves. These are small poppet type valves, mushroom valves, very similar to car engine valves. I'll see how many of these are stuck. I can see the bottom right one isn't. That's moving okay and the top left one's fine. But here's a close up of the problem. I flushed this engine about five or six times when I rebuilt it and put it back together on the steam plant to try and get rid of the silicone rubber. And to be honest, it was a real pain because to flush the engine's water chest, I had to dismantle it to the level that you're seeing here and beyond. And each time I thoroughly flushed out every part of the water chest, the pump worked beautifully for about two or three minutes. Then it stopped pumping as yet another particle of silicone rubber jammed itself under one of the valves. I started the pump running on compressed air, and if you look carefully, you'll see particles in the water. And it really doesn't take much to stop these valves from working. The best pump of this type that I've ever owned was one that a friend of mine called Don English from Jubilee Fittings built. He modified the water chest valve arrangement to use stainless steel balls, and it worked much better. Taking the cap off was easy. Taking this second piece off is a bit more difficult. And one more time, I'm showing how you must not use a Stanley knife blade in a Stanley knife, and under no circumstances use a screwdriver like this. This is the way I always do it, and it seems to be the best method. However, you can come unstuck with this. Note to self, always hold the blade correctly. Make sure that no part of your finger at any time is in front of the sharp part of the blade. And this includes the very nasty, very sharp pointy ends. 
I will demonstrate. Watch this. Here I am holding the blade wrong. I'm not doing this for the video. I did it accidentally. As I hammer the blade, it's hammering it into my finger. And I thought, hmm, I'm feeling pain. What is occurring? I am doing it wrong. Now I'm holding it correctly. One finger either side of the blade and no part of the finger in front of the blade. A health and safety common sense warning. Do not use the Stanley knife to lever off the part. Only use the Stanley knife blade to create a gap that you can then get a screwdriver blade into and you can gently prise the part away from the port face. Using a Stanley knife as a lever is not a good idea because the steel is very, very hard and it will suddenly break and a part will fly off and if you're not wearing eye protection and a piece of Stanley knife blade hits you in the eye, that would not be good. Now the first two parts have been removed. The third part, the port face, is also a separate piece. And with a bit of luck, I won't have to remove that. What I do need to remove, though, is all this gasket material. And one more time, what's left of the silicone rubber. I thought I'd got most of this the last time. Or was it the time before? Or was it the time before that? I phoned the Samaritans, but the line was busy. So I just resigned myself to spending quite a long time, very carefully, scraping off the remains of the gasket. And the gasket compound and some bits of silicone rubber. What a surprise. Half an hour later, and I'm still doing it, but at least I've moved round the other side. This is a very boring job, so to break the monotony, I borrowed a small amount of acid from my acid bath, propped up a small tub on the bench, and then I put all the small valves into the acid. This is only weak acid, and it should be perfectly fine for cleaning these small valves. And then, just for a change, I'm now over the other side, and I'm removing even more gasket material and sealant. Here's a top tip. To clean off all the gasket material from around the base of the studs, use a piece of roughly sawn copper pipe. And as I'm clearly showing in the video, all you do is rotate the copper pipe and it cleans off every trace of gasket material around the base of the studs. Simple, but effective, and very easy to use. I don't know what's been going on here. This is the bottom part of the water chest housing. And I don't know why it's so violently scratched. I'll look into that later. For now, I'm running the pump to see whether any of the bottom valves lift. And no, they don't. There's a bit of a squirt coming from one of them. They are all stuck. I'm sure this job in the long term will make me go more insane than setting the valve gear on the Stevenson's rocket. But I do like a challenge, and it keeps me off the streets. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.